Hello, everybody. My name is Julian, and I want to welcome you to my channel. For the last number of years, I've worked as a coach development learning facilitator in the province of Ontario, helping train new and existing sailing coaches to up their certifications and become more effective instructors. This video is a screen capture of a webinar that I gave in the spring of 2020 as part of our online delivery of instructor development materials. Most of the information presented in this video has already been seen in other videos on my channel, but I thought that there might still be some interest in this updated video. If you have any questions about the content, please feel free to put them in the comments below. Okay, so here we have the title slide, The Physics of Sailing, Steering with the Center of Effort and the Center of Lateral Resistance. So this slide has a lot of information on it. We're defining the idea of forces and the idea of force centers. If you want to think in like a graphical sense, we're going to call the force the arrow that represents like a pushing or a pulling that's going to happen on, on an object. And the force center is kind of a more complicated idea, but it's something, something like the average location where forces act. So I'll, I'll read the definitions. A force is an influence tending to change the motion of a body or produce motion. So you can think of that like gravity is an example of a force. Pressure acting on a sail is an example of a force. Buoyancy is an example of a force in sailing as well. And force centers are formally defined as uh, when we can combine multiple forces together that act in different locations, the resulting force acts at the center. This is an imaginary location and not always the actual geometric center of an object. And so I have an example of that coming up very soon, but here's um, like an annotated diagram where we're showing a force arrow, the orange one, and a force arrow, the blue one, and they're acting at location one and two. And if we were to add those two together, we would say that the green arrow on this slide is the combination of those two forces. And the location where that green arrow is pushing is the center, it's that purple dot. And we notice that it's not actually the center of the line between the two, um, the two dots. That's an interesting thing to observe, okay? So the center where the resultant force acts lies on a straight line that connects location one and location two. Notice that force one is stronger than force two. We know that because it's a longer arrow. The greater strength of force one means that the center will be closer to location one than location two. So we'll, we'll jump to the gravity example now. Um, have you all heard of center of gravity before? Hopefully that comes up, you know, normally when we're talking about things tipping over. So I want you to consider a ball that's made of two halves. Okay, the left half is made of red rubber and the right half is made of blue rubber. In this situation, because both halves are made of rubber, both halves weigh the same. So gravity acts the same on each half of this ball. Because both arrows are the same length, representing the gravity in, in the diagram on the left here, if we add those two together, we get one longer arrow, which can represent the total force of gravity on that ball. And the location where we would hang that force arrow is dead center on the ball because, again, both of those arrows are the same length. Okay, now, consider a similar ball made of two halves where the left side of the ball is made of red rubber and the right side of the ball is made of steel. So steel weighs obviously more than rubber, so the right side weighs more than the left. So in this case, we would see that the arrow that represents the gravity acting on the right side of the ball is larger, longer, it's a greater force acting on the right side of the ball than the force acting on the left. What that means is that when we add those two vectors together, both of those force vectors together, the location where we would say that the total gravity force is actually going to be skewed somewhat to the right. And we see that in the diagram on the right the center of gravity moves to the right on this ball because half of the ball is made of a heavier weighted material. So now we can move on to relate this back to sailing. 
And we can see that sailboats are propelled by a force of wind in the sails, and we can call that the effort force, okay? In a boat like a 420 that has two sails, each of the sails is going to have its own effort force. And actually, it's going to have its own center of effort. But So the jib is going to have a force that acts near the center of the jib. And the mainsail is going to have a force that acts near the center of the mainsail. And if we're trying to figure out where the average or the total force is going to act, we need to take into consideration how big the force is that acts on the main and how big the force is that acts on the jib. So remember that the resultant force acts somewhere on a straight line between the point where each force acts, and it's skewed slightly towards the larger arrow. So in this case, we can see that uh, the center of effort, which is this purple dot that I, I'm sorry, in Pear Deck, I don't have a way to like point or highlight, but I'll just tell you the purple dot on the slide in front of you is the center of effort. And it's skewed towards the mainsail so that it's just after the mast, about one third back in the mainsail. And that's a good general location for where we would expect to find the center of effort on a 420 if everything is properly trimmed. Okay, so there's an introduction to the center of effort viewed from the side. Um, we can simplify if, if we just realize that the center of effort is made up by a force on the jib and a force on the mainsail, we can simplify a lot of what we think about to just talk about one force acting on the center of effort. But um, keep in mind for later that it's made up of those two separate forces added together. Okay, so this is a simplified diagram showing just the one force. Now, we can also draw diagrams of boats from above, and you'll also see from the back later. If we draw the exact same diagram from above, what we see is again, we have a force arrow acting on the jib and a force arrow acting on the main, and we can add them together to get the magenta force arrow, which is going to be our resultant force. And again, the location of that force is about one third back in the main. It lies on a straight line between the force of the jib and the force of the main. So from the top, our simplified diagram is looking like this. Now I'll introduce the idea of the center of lateral resistance as well. Okay, so we'll start by uh, talking about leeway. Leeway is a term that refers to a boat sliding sideways as it moves through the water. Okay, so a boat that is side slipping more would have more leeway, and a boat that's side slipping less would have less leeway. So leeway is resisted by the forces of water on the hull and the foils, mostly by the force of water on the centerboard, but also by the force of water on the side of the boat and on the rudder, okay? So just like we did with the sails, we can say recognize that there's going to be a force on the rudder, a force on the hull, and a force on the centerboard. And if we add those all together, we magically get a simplified point, one point and one force, where we can say that uh, all of the forces act in that location, okay? And another way to think about this when we're thinking about the center of lateral resistance is to think of it as a pivot point that the boat will turn around, okay? Um, and that becomes very useful as well in the future. So here's our simplified diagram that only shows one force and one point. But remember that this arrow, this green arrow here called the resisting force is representing all of the forces on the hull and the rudder and the centerboard. We can also draw this from above, okay? And the only reason why I'm showing you from the side and from above is because I'd like you to get comfortable with the idea that you can kind of turn objects around in your head and think about how if I have an arrow that's pointing uh, like from front to back on my boat, what's that going to look like on the side of the boat? And if I have an arrow that's pointed from front to back on my boat, what's that gonna look like from the top of my boat, okay? So here's our simplified diagram showing, again, we've combined all those forces together into one from above. What's super interesting is when we start adding 
the effort force and the resisting force together on the same diagram. So here we have a diagram of the boat from above, and we're showing the effort force pointing forwards and to leeward, and the resisting force pointing backwards and to windward. And that's reflective of what actually would be happening while we're sailing. The sails are trying to drive the boat forward, and it's also trying to drive the boat sideways. And the resisting force is pushing back sideways to keep the boat going in a straight line. And it's also adding a bit of drag, which is pulling the boat, you know, you sort of think about it like pulling the boat backwards in the water, but the effort force should overcome that so that overall you're going to move forwards. So from the top and from the sides, we can see what those arrows look like. In both cases, they're mostly resisting each other, right? They're fighting against each other. Um, and hopefully the effort force wins out and the boat moves forward, basically. Now I want to introduce to you the idea of balanced helm because it's a good starting point. So if by design or by random chance or by the skill of the sailors, the center of effort and the center of lateral resistance are in line with each other, or very close to one another, they don't have a very strong steering effect. This is something that we want, okay? We don't want the boat to always be trying to steer itself. We would like the boat most often to want to try to continue in a straight line. So we call the condition when the boat does not want to turn balanced helm or neutral helm. We can move the center of effort forward and backwards by adjusting our sails. Okay, so uh, to show you what that might look like, let's say that we let the mainsail out. So what happens if we let the mainsail out? Well, what happens is the force of the wind on the sail is much less in the mainsail than it is in the jib. And so what happens is the center of effort shifts forwards towards the jib or towards the sail that's pulled in. What happens if we ease the jib? Well, a very similar thing happens. If we ease the jib, the force in the jib gets smaller, the force in the main mainsail stays the same, so the center of effort moves aft or backwards, okay? So now, the center of effort can move forward or backwards, that's what I just showed you. So, which direction will the boat want to steer if the center of effort has moved forwards because we eased our mainsail. I don't want to bear off. Yeah, so, okay, so some of you might want to just answer um, by talking. I was pausing because it's a Pear Deck activity and I'm seeing people answer and they're actually changing their answers as we speak. So that's kind of cool. So almost everybody's answering bear off now because we said it. So let's try to explain why. So if we add the arrows in on this diagram, where we've accepted that the CE moves forwards towards the sail that's pulled in and away from the sail that's sheeted out. The first thing that we do is we draw the arrows on there to prove that it's going to turn, okay? The second thing that we're going to do is if we look at these arrows, they're pointed in opposite directions and they're separated by a distance. And so if you've taken high school physics, you might be familiar with the term torque. And if you've taken uh, any engineering, then you might be familiar with the term moment. Uh, if you're familiar with either of those, great. If you're not familiar with them, now is the time for me to make you familiar, okay? So the idea is when you have two forces and they act in the same place, they do not cause a moment, they do not cause a torque. When you have two forces that act in different locations, the strength of the forces and the distance that those forces are apart from one another both contribute to creating what's called a moment. Um, and so in engineering, moments cause uh, rotation or bending and torques cause twisting. So because the boat is steering, it's a moment, not a torque. But if, if you're like working on simplified terms, then torque is just fine. The idea here is that uh, if we connect the arrow from the one that's pointing away from us to the one that's pointing towards us with a curved arrow, we can see what direction the boat is going to want to steer. And so what we see here 
the direction of the moment shows the direction that the boat wants to turn. In this case, the bow is turning away from the wind, so the boat's going to want to bear off. Okay. So now, which direction will this boat want to steer? All right, so I'll just take a second here. I'm going to show your responses. The majority of you are saying head up, but some were saying bear off and go straight. So um, I'll reveal the answer to you as we go through this process. So here we've left the jib and we kept the mainsail pulled in. And so the result that that had was that it moved the center of effort backwards, again, towards the sail that's pulled in and away from the sail that's let out. So if we draw the forces on this sail, and we draw the moment on this sail, we can see that actually, if we um, like if we connect the directions of these two arrows together, we get a moment that is steering counterclockwise, which in this case would cause the boat to want to turn towards the wind, which in this case would cause the boat to want to head up. So uh, we just have bow turning towards the wind is heading up. So what's going to happen to this boat? Okay, most of you are in agreement that this boat is going to want to steer straight. I've got two people saying bear off. So can I get the bear off people to uh, let me know why you think that? Well, it looks like the sea is like a little bit ahead of the CLR, which is why I thought it was bear off, but um, they're like basically overlapped. So it makes sense it's going straight. Right. So you're, you're right. It does look very much like the CE is just ahead. And in reality, um, if we didn't have the third answer of go straight, then bear off would definitely be the right answer here. But uh, I want to highlight right here on this slide. When the CE and CLR are vertically in line or very close to one another, they don't cause any steering effects. Okay. So there's a couple of reasons why that statement's true. One is if, if the dots fall right on top of one another, then, um, you know, it's not going to want to steer, right? It's going to be like absolutely dead straight. But if the dots are just like a couple of centimeters in front or behind each other, what you have to think about is the boat is a long, skinny object moving through the water. It's kind of like... Um, it's kind of like a dart flying through the air, okay? So even though the dart is flying through the air and like, you know, the wind might um, might be impacting the fins a little bit more than, than the tip, um, the actual like aerodynamics of the situation make it want to straighten out anyways, okay? So um, a little bit of misalignment between the CE and the CLR does not make the boat super, super dramatically want to steer. It's large misalignments between the CE and CLR. And actually, it turns out that like the farther you move those forces apart from each other, the stronger the effect is. So I think we were here with go straight. OK, so yeah, in this case, the CE and CLR are vertically in line with one another, or at least they were very close. Um, it's kind of hard to draw two dots in the exact same spot and then actually be able to see that both of those dots are there. So like two overlapping dots is pretty close to the same spot. So this is a situation with balanced or neutral helm, okay? So can you think of any other ways that we can move the center of effort? Wheeling the boat. Okay, and somebody is shouting out their answer, which is absolutely correct. So healing the boat is definitely one way that we can do that. So. I'm going to lock your responses just so that I can show these real quick. So I have boat heel, body weight, body weight. So when you think about body weight, let's talk about body weight. So moving your body side to side is going to affect boat heel. Moving your body forward and backwards also is going to affect the CE and CLR. And I think I have a slide on that. But uh, that's going to be affecting what we would call boat trim, which is the forward and backwards attitude of the boat. I have sail controls, absolutely. So talking about the sail controls, if we depower a sail, it's going to have a similar effect to if we had left that sail. Okay, so 
think about that when you're trying to reconcile what direction the CE and CLR are going to move. Uh, I have weight balance sail trim, which is exactly the same as like sail trim is very similar to adjusting your sail controls. Tiller adjustment is an interesting one. It turns out that adjusting the position of your rudder um, changes the dynamic forces in a very similar way to um, moving the CE. It's just like it, it moves the CLR instead. Okay, maybe we'll get to that in a future slide. Um, pulling up the centerboard, absolutely. Healing the boat. So some of these things are focused more on the CLR, which we're going to get to, but uh, certainly healing the boat and sail controls are things that are focused on moving the center of effort, which is what I was asking about, okay? So other ways to move the center of effort are with sail controls, where if we depower the main sail, the center of effort moves towards the jib. And similarly, if we depower the jib, the center of effort moves towards the main sail. If we adjust the mast rake, raking the mast aft moves the CE backwards. Do you all understand what mast rake is? Okay, good. So if we tilt the mast backwards, the whole rig moves backwards. So the center of effort just moves with the sails backwards. Healing the boat. This is going to take a couple more slides. Okay, so hopefully you're ready for a couple more slides. So moving the CE side to side, we can trace the center of effort and the center of lateral resistance out onto the rear view the same way that we did with the top view. So the same way that I showed you that, you know, you could draw the boat from the, the side and the top, turns out you can also draw it from the back. Who knew? Um, the center of effort and the center of lateral resistance are vertically in line in all three views in this situation. So because of that, this boat will have balanced or neutral angle and will not want to turn on its own. Hopefully uh, that statement stands true with you guys and, and nobody's having scratching their head at that point. So what I would like you to do in Pear Deck is draw a dot similar to what I just did on the last slide to represent the CE and the CLR on the rear view and the top view in the diagram to the right. So a lot of you are getting the rear view absolutely right, but I also see that some of you, and it's kind of hard for me to pinpoint who, but some of you are still having trouble because you're drawing the both dots on the center line in the top view. So I'm gonna show you what I think the right answer is, okay? And then you can think, just think for yourself about whether or not you drew it this way. So remember that the green dot is the center of lateral resistance. The purple dot is the center of effort. So if we look at the rear view of this boat, we can see that the green dot is located somewhere in the foils. It's like it's on the rudder, on the center board, right? It's down below the hull, but we know that it's the combination of the forces on the hull and the, and the foils. So if we look at that, because of the heel of the boat, this particular dot has moved slightly to the right. Now let's all look at the purple dot. The purple dot represents the center of effort, which is all of the forces in the sails. And in the boat that we see pictured here, because of the heel of the boat, this dot has moved off to the left. Okay? If we want to trace that onto the top view, what we should see is now we need to think a little bit more carefully about which side of the boat is the windward side and which side of the boat is the leeward side. But the leeward side, which is the side where the sails are drawn, is above us. And the purple dot has moved up on the page towards that side of the boat. The windward side is sort of below us. And it's where we're drawing the green dot, which has moved down on the page. So neither dot is on the center line in this case. Okay, so neither dot's on the center line. Uh, I've asked you the question, which direction will the boat steer? Most of you have answered. I'll show you the answers. Uh, 10 of you are saying head up. So let's go through the process here. First, we're gonna draw the force vectors in. Next, we're gonna draw in the moment, okay? Hopefully you all understand where this moment is, like where that blue arrow comes from. It comes from connecting, just connecting the purple arrow with the green arrow. 
and the direction that we have to bend that arrow around tells us the direction that the boat's going to want to steer. So in this case, the bow will be turning towards the wind or the boat will be heading up. So we'll go through a very similar exercise here. We have a boat that's heeling to windward. So please draw a dot for me that represents the center of effort and the center of lateral resistance on this boat. I'm going to throw the responses up here. So um, this person's drawing them in black, which makes it hard to know which one's which, but I would say that they've got it right. This person's got it absolutely right. This person's got it absolutely right. This person didn't finish before I started showing them. Uh, this is okay. If, if we look right here, just to be like technically correct, um, if, if this is you, I don't know who, who, who this belongs to, but what's going on that's a little bit wrong in this picture is that the dots in the top view have moved backwards on the boat for some reason. So I've given you a dashed line to show you how to like, how to trace a straight line up and down and side to side on the boat. And if you just use that as a guide, you'll see that those dots should move forwards. Okay. Um, that's probably enough of that, but so those are some really strong responses. Well done, everybody. So here's my correct answer, I guess. So what we see is that the green dot, oh, okay, so looking from the rear, the green dot, which represents the center of lateral resistance, has moved to the left, and the purple dot, which is representing the center of effort, has moved to the right. In the top-down view, that puts the green dot to leeward, and the purple dot on the center line or to windward, depending on how, um, I probably drew it a little bit too close to center right now, but I think that's good enough. So in answer to my question, which direction will this boat steer? Everybody who chose to answer has answered that it will bear off. Let's just draw those arrows in. So we have a, a magenta, yeah, a magenta arrow that's connected to the purple dot and a green arrow that's connected to the green dot. And if we draw our blue, steering moment bent arrow to connect those two together. We have a counterclockwise steering moment, which is going to make us want to bear off in this case. Okay. Is it possible to move the center of lateral resistance forwards and backwards? So some of you say no, but most of you say yes. The answer is, of course, yes. Um, there's some boats have very fixed geometries that would make it more more or less difficult to do, but the answer is still yes. Okay. So here are some ways that we can move the center of lateral resistance. We can move our dagger board or our center board. If we raise or pivot the board, the center of lateral resistance moves aft. If you would like to figure that out for yourself. You can draw a boat and then draw the center board pivoting backwards and see why it moves aft, okay? If you have a boat with a dagger board where it doesn't pivot, it just moves straight up and down, the center of lateral resistance will still move backwards, okay? You might just have to trust me on that, but the trick there is to just remember that the center of lateral resistance is made up of the forces on the hull, the forces of the rudder, and the forces of the dagger board. So if we pull the dagger board up, we still have a lot of rudder hanging out at the back of the boat, and it moves the center of lateral resistance backwards. Okay, what about the rudder? If we beaver tail or lose the rudder, the CLR moves forwards. The reason for that is because we're doing things that make the rudder less effective, which is similar to luffing a sail. If you luff your mainsail, the CE moves forward. If you beaver tail or if you like drop your rudder, the CLR moves forward. Okay, we can also do it with the crew position. So if we dig in the bow by moving our crew weight forwards, the, the CLR moves forwards. Does anybody want to think about and explain to me why that happens? The force on the hull will be further forward. Right, because the bow is a pointy object and we've just sunken it into the water. It's, it's like having any other object receiving force in the water and it happens to be forwards, so the CLR moves forwards. Okay, and just the opposite. If we dig in the stern, the CLR moves aft. Okay, so this slide here, we probably could have taught the whole lesson with this one slide, 
remember that if we move the CE aft of the CLR, the boat wants to head up and we call this weather helm. If we move the CE ahead of the CLR, the boat wants to bear off and we call this lee helm. When we're looking from a side to side perspective, if we have leeward heel, the boat will want to head up and we call this weather helm. If we have windward heel, the boat will want to bear off and we call this lee helm. Whenever the CE and CLR are vertically in line in both of the views, excuse me, which is to say like it's vertically in line in the rear view and the side view, then the boat doesn't want to steer itself and we call this balance.